Angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, more frequently called ACE inhibitors, are a common class of medication used to treat high blood pressure and heart failure. By inhibiting angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE, ACE inhibitors cause vasodilation, decreasing the heart's workload and lowering blood pressure. In this video, I'll teach you my mnemonic to remember everything you need to know about ACE inhibitors on test day. Howdy, y'all, and welcome to my favorite saloon. I've got myself one heck of a hand in this poker game, four aces. These aces can help you remember ACE inhibitors. ACE cards for ACE inhibitors. Easy, right? While the mechanism isn't explicitly symbolized in this mnemonic, we'll quickly talk about it here because if you understand the mechanism, it might help you remember the uses and side effects. ACE inhibitors work by blocking or inhibiting the ACE enzyme, which is short for angiotensin converting enzyme. ACE normally works to convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 in the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, also known as RAS. Angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor, so by blocking production of angiotensin 2, ACE inhibitors induce vasodilation. This vessel dilation causes a reduction in blood pressure, similar to how letting go of a squeezed hose can cause the water, or blood, inside to spurt out with less resistance. And there's more. Blocking ACE also has effects farther downstream by reducing aldosterone production. Less aldosterone means that more sodium and water are excreted through the kidneys, and this reduction in blood volume also causes a decrease in blood pressure. Now that we've covered the mechanism, let's talk about a few important drug names that you should know. My opponent seems to be upset at his loss, and for good reason. He's gambled away his family heirloom, a beautiful pearl necklace. The pearls here are our symbol for the prill ending for all ACE inhibitors, because pearl kind of sounds like prill, right? Frequently prescribed ACE inhibitors include lisinopril, captopril, and enalapril. I mean, enalapril. For test day, don't worry too much about memorizing every drug name. If you can remember the pril endings, you'll be good to go. Now that we've covered the drug names, let's move on to the clinical uses of ACE inhibitors. Next round of drinks is on me. Except the bartender in the back seems to be having some trouble. The beer is spraying out of the nozzle with a lot of pressure and it's splashing everywhere. The high pressure in this beer barrel is a reminder that ACE inhibitors are used to treat high blood pressure or hypertension. High pressure for high blood pressure, got it? We've already covered the mechanism of how ACE inhibitors lower blood pressure. They inhibit the production of angiotensin II, causing vessels to dilate and also reduce aldosterone production, reducing blood volume. Both of these factors contribute to a reduction in blood pressure. I think my opponent may have an anger problem. Because he lost the poker game, he's ripping up his cards. Notice how all of his cards are hearts? These ripped hearts on the cards can help you remember that one clinical use of ACE inhibitors is for the treatment of heart failure. Ripped hearts for heart failure. Like we discussed earlier, ACE inhibitors block angiotensin II, allowing the blood vessels to relax and dilate to lower blood pressure. This reduction in blood pressure also reduces the afterload that the heart has to pump against. ACE inhibitors are so effective that they have actually been proven to improve survival rates in patients with heart failure. Got that? Great, now let's move on to discuss a few side effects of the ACE inhibitors before we close. Like any saloon, this one is pretty smoky. All the smoke here is making the bartender cough. <coughs> the coughing bartender here represents a cough. And since saloons like this are found in deserts, this can help you remember that we are specifically looking for a dry cough. ACE inhibitors are known for the side effect of a dry cough. The mechanism here is probably beyond the scope of the NCLEX, but angiotensin-converting enzyme also happens to play a role in the breakdown of bradykinin, a peptide in the body that promotes inflammation and may cause coughing. ACE inhibitors prevent the breakdown of bradykinin, and that's how this unpleasant side effect of a dry cough might appear. While this dry cough is relatively harmless, it can be quite irritating and is in fact the main reason why patients discontinue taking their ACE inhibitors. This dry cough is pretty unique to ACE inhibitors, so it's something that NCLEX loves to ask you about. Just remember this coughing bartender and you'll be good to go on test day. While we're back here with the coughing bartender, I want to bring your attention back to this high pressure barrel. We've talked about how ACE inhibitors treat hypertension, and as with all medications, you need to be cautious about the medication working too well. In this case, that means lowering blood pressure too much. Low blood pressure, or hypotension, is a possible side effect of ACE inhibitors. 
Maybe I should take my winnings and just get out of here. It looks like my opponent is getting more and more upset, and by the looks of his swollen face, he's not afraid to get into a fight. By the way, the swollen face can help you remember angioedema, another adverse effect of ACE inhibitors. Angioedema is swelling of the face, especially around the eyes and mouth. Swollen face for angioedema. Makes sense, right? Angioedema is also related to a buildup of bradykinin, and this angioedema can be life-threatening if the swelling closes the airway. So it's super important for the patient to get treated immediately if they notice any facial swelling. Moving on, is that a banana? Yep, sure enough, my opponent has a banana in his gun holster instead of a pistol. No wonder he got so beat up in his last fight. Here at Pixarize, bananas are our symbol for potassium, because bananas have a lot of potassium, right? Specifically, let this banana gun remind you that ACE inhibitors can cause hyperkalemia, or too much potassium in the body. Which makes sense when you think about how a function of the RAS system and aldosterone is to excrete or get rid of potassium. ACE inhibitors block the RAS system and reduce aldosterone, allowing more potassium to stay in the body. As the nurse, you should anticipate this rise in potassium levels by monitoring electrolytes during treatment. And, importantly, you should teach your patient to avoid potassium supplements, potassium salt substitutes, and potassium-sparing diuretics. We don't want them to take anything that could make the hyperkalemia worse. Got it? Can I deal you in the next round? Oh, come on. Don't let these tarantulas scare you away. We're in the desert here, and they always somehow seem to sneak inside. These tarantulas should remind you that ACE inhibitors are teratogenic. Because tarantula sounds a lot like teratogenic, get it? It's the teratogenic tarantula. This means that ACE inhibitors should be avoided during pregnancy, especially in the second and third trimesters. This is because the fetus needs angiotensin and aldosterone signaling for kidney development. And like we now know, ACE inhibitors block the production of both of these hormones. Just think of these tarantulas on test day to remind you that ACE inhibitors are teratogenic. You got all that? Let's review just to make sure you didn't miss anything. ACE inhibitors are medications that end in prill and inhibit the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. This causes vasodilation and lowers blood pressure. ACE inhibitors are used to treat hypertension and heart failure. Watch out for the side effects of dry cough, angioedema, and hyperkalemia. Remember the things to avoid to prevent excess potassium, like potassium supplements, potassium salt substitutes, and potassium-sparing diuretics. ACE inhibitors are teratogenic and should not be used during pregnancy. And that's it. Not too bad, right? Well, if you change your mind about wanting to play, feel free to come back to this scene anytime and pull up a chair. You're always welcome here in the Wild West. Adios, partner. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.